Hey guys, Marissa with Lingual Abilities here. Today we are going to talk about boom cards and how to use them in your teletherapy experience. There are a ton of great resources on here, both free and paid um, for teletherapists in speech, OT, special education, uh, English teachers, anything that you might be doing. So they're called boom cards. The website is boomlearning.com, just www.boomlearning.com. Uh, and when you sign in, this is what you will see, your profile page. Um, so you can go in and make classes for your students. You'll have a library of cards. And based on what you assign people, you can actually see reports. So first, I wanted to show you what it looks like when you have classes. When you first get started, you won't have any. But I did create one just to show you um, what it looks like. You can add students. And so um, when you add a new one, you know, you can put in whatever their name is going to be um, and uh, create a password for them. Now, then when you have this person created, you can assign them to different activities. You can give them a password. Um, you can look at reports of what they've done. And then students can actually log in with this information um, when you get to the login page, there's, you know, students or teachers or makers, people who are making cards so that you can actually see what they're doing, kind of like a homework activity. So that's really nice. Um, so just to see what it looks like when you assign a student an activity, you'll have to have something in your library and I'll show you how to do that. But essentially you can come here to assign and then all the things that are in your library or things that you might want to search for. So for example, let's go to special education. And let's see what I have in for the K sound, if anything will come up here. Okay, great. So I've got K and G minimal pairs. This is a free resource that I found from Badger State Speechy. I'm going to assign this to my kid. Okay, and when you're done, all you have to do is click out. And then you can come to see, I believe in the report, Yes, all the things that they have been assigned. Now, you will see in recent plays what they've done if they've actually played it, but this is just a test student who hasn't done anything yet. You know, nobody's got this information, so there's nothing that's going to show up. But if you did, that's where that would be. So you can come back to your classes, see all the students that you have. You can see that this one... Um, has been assigned as a class, this language practice for middle school, but hasn't been assigned anything specifically to them. So to show you how to um, add in this assignment, you go to assignments here, and then you can assign a deck, a deck of cards to the entire class. So same thing, you can come down and see all the things that you have available. Um, I've made some folders, which I'll show you how to do in here in just a second. But let's say, okay, everybody's going to do this Valentine's activity coming up here on Valentine's Day. So let's add that. We go back to our classroom. And we can see that we've added that to the assigned decks. So if we want to make sure our students have it, we can come back here to our student. Here's our student that we haven't assigned anything individually to, but we can see they have the two things for um the classroom that they've been assigned. And then you could see how they had interacted with those. Okay, um, and then you can also access reports just as we were looking, if you wanna look at the reports, you know, specifically by a deck. Let's say if we wanted to look at the synonyms and antonyms thing, you can see all the students that you have. They've never interacted with it because they don't actually exist. Uh, but then you could see, you know, some percentages for progress, which is really nice. So to go get you some um, decks, you go to library. And then this is what I have in right now. If you haven't done anything, it will be empty. Um, so you'll want to go to the store. And the cool thing about this is you can search by subjects or you can just search by something that you're interested in. Let's say we want to look at plurals today. And you can see all the different things that are created for plurals. Now, you buy things based on points rather than actual dollars. And what that means is you have to buy so many points to um, buy this thing. Now, there are plenty of things that are zero points, so you can get them for free. But if we come and let's say we wanted to buy this one for 400 points, we're going to add it to the cart. Come up here and take a look. 
and it'll show you how much each number of points is worth. Now, obviously, if you buy um, more points, you save some money there, um, but this one would essentially cost us $5 to get this activity. So um, I'm not going to buy this one, but if you did, you could go through the checkout process and see what that's like buying the points. Now, a cool thing is that there are plenty of resources, if we go back to the store, that are free. So to find that, there's usually a little thing up here that shows, oh, it might be in featured, here we go. So I have zero store credits, I haven't bought any of the points, but I can go to free and find all sorts of cool things that are zero points. So let's say special education is really good for my field. I like to go here. Also, the English language arts is good for my field. But, you know, there's all sorts of cool things here. So here we go. We have sorting colors. And you can see that it's already in my library. Um, let's go find something that I haven't already purchased. And I'll show you what it looks like when um, you add that. Okay, Christmas colors. I know I haven't downloaded. It looks like this. So you can add to a wish list. You can add to your cart which you don't need to do because it's free. So you can go ahead and add it to your library and it'll just ask you, okay, if you want to do that and add it. So you've bought whatever you're interested in. Hopefully you've taken advantage of all the free resources that there are. I mean, it just goes on for pages and pages and pages. It's really quite great. Then you can see all the things that you've downloaded or purchased or created in your library. So here, these are just ones that I just added. I haven't organized them or anything. And we can see um, that Valentine activity is the last one that I added. Now, if you purchase anything or you create anything in the studio, it will come up here in your decks. So these are just decks that other people have created. These are decks that either you purchased or you created. You can organize them by special education, by all the subjects that they have there. Um, if you just want to see all of them. And then another cool thing is that you can actually create folders. So let's say that we wanted to create a syntax folder. I've got some cool syntax activities that we can add. You'll see that it will pop up in your list of folders. And then if you come to unfoldered, these are the ones that uh, haven't been organized yet you can drag and drop them into whatever folders are appropriate. So we've got a synonym here. I'm going to bring this over to vocabulary. You can drag and drop, and it will disappear from your unfoldered folder because now it is in a categorized folder. So same thing, we've got idioms. Why don't we bring that over to figurative language? And you can make your categories or your folders whatever you want them to be, just so it's a little easier to find and then similarly, when you are assigning to your kids, you know, you can come here and assign them based on, oh, that vocabulary that I was just in. Here's the synonyms that I was looking at. I'm going to assign you synonyms. So that's a nice use of the folders. Then if we come here to reports, we see exactly what we saw before um, in the classes section. We can see what people have worked on, if anything. If we pick on another one, it will add it here to the list, and then you can print that and have this information really good for progress reports. So another video, we will go over the studio and how to make boom cards, but I wanted to show you how they work. Um, last thing, I will just go ahead and pull up for you what it looks like when you're playing. So if you just click on it, you'll actually see the um, activity. Now, some of them are self-correcting and will show you what the answer is supposed to be or say, oh, that's wrong. So for example, let's see if this one um, self-corrects. Trying to find the synonym for admire. I know it's not ignore and it'll tell me, nope, that's wrong. Okay, well, maybe it means respect and I get a yes. And then we just go straight to the next one. So once we finish this, and get to the end of the cards, it will tell us how well we did. Um, you know, we can just skip through cards if we're not interested in that. If you click an overview, you can see all of the cards that you're going to come through and the total number of cards here, 11 that you have. Some of them will have some noise, like a little ding if you get it right, but some of them are silent. So just check that out. That's what it looks like. Each one is a little bit different. You know, if we come over here to 
this listening to descriptions one has different uh, text, different uh, pictures that people have put in, you know, and some of them are going to be these like multiple choice things. Other ones might be a game activity. Um, let's see, for example, that Valentine's one that we had would be a good one to show you if I can find it now. Here we go. It's a drag and drop acti activity. So drag and drop is really fun for telepractice. The kids can bring over, you know, these little things. And you don't even have to use it for a math activity. You can use this as a reinforcer um, just to do something fun for Valentine's Day. Submit it and see if you got it right. There you go. So that's Boom Cards in a nutshell. Check it out. It's a really good resource. You don't have to spend a ton of money or any money if you don't want to. All of these things that I downloaded are for free. Um, and then, you know, you just screen share when you're ready to show it to your clients. So check it out. It's a cool resource. And I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks. Bye.